Happy Father's Day. This is Founder Lamer with the Fantasy Grounds Academy. The last couple days I've been scrambling around trying to find resources and kind of collecting all of the things that can potentially help us when we are setting up our audio for the first time or the only time we've ever done it in the Fantasy Grounds Unity platform. Uh, so I want to start off with a couple of caveats here. So um, if you're going to use the uh, Sirenscape um, sound, a lot of that's integrated into the combat. So the, this is actually really easy because all you have to do is get your system authorization. You bring up the online web player and then you can import your data once you have it connected through the authorization. And then you click a generate um, web player URL and then you hit click invite and it creates a little link down here and you and your players, they just have to connect and click on that. So when you click on it the first time, you just say yes to all and then you'll be at the player and it'll play the sounds that you have queued for whatever the moment is in your game. So in this case, I have a Sahuagin combat set up in Fantasy Grounds. So right now I have a couple characters. So I'm gonna um, bring over the um, combat tracker, get that going. And then on the map itself, there are some um, enemies here. Uh, they're they're kind of waiting their turn in combat here. So I have like two Sahuagin and a, a few sharks here. And then on the on this deck here, I have a couple pirates that are kind of uh, waiting their turn. So essentially, when I um, bring this stuff up, Sirenscape. If you have the modules loaded, so if you are if you already own the sound modules from the Fantasy Ground store. Uh, you'll have some of this context of, of uh, audio to use for your um, session. So being that I have a giant shark and some Sahuagin, so here's an attack of the Sahuagins. That's a combination of things. Here's the Sahu Sahuagins attack. There's a battle sound. So this is a mood. So I'm going to play this. And this comes up because I have the Sahuagin here on the combat tracker. So if I click on that, it's going to bring up the battle sounds and I want to say yes to all the first time because I don't want this to keep coming up. So only the first time you do that, will it keep asking you to do that? So that's one way to, to get this uh, taken. And then you got to bring up your, your audio player and you can hit, you can hit the audio. So as you can see or hear, this actually came up um, as one of the sounds that comes with Sirenscape. So as you're fighting, you can click these and make them useful for your campaign. So this is all nice if you have a Sirenscape account because you have to have an actual um, a Super Siren account for all this to kind of be more automated for you and easier to set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the sound but some of you will want to use the localized player. So this is kind of what I'm going to be covering more. So there's a couple ways to do it, but essentially if you go to file, you can import your own audio here if you want, and you can actually play it from here. And it's, you know, it's something you can do. And this one's actually hooked up to my media player, which I hadn't anticipated, but it's going to play through my Windows media player. The only problem with this is that I have to control the volume and all that stuff from here. So there's no real integration other than playing or triggering the audio, which is what mainly the Fantasy Grounds context menu does, is it allows you to trigger sounds. But I don't have any stop buttons or anything, so it's really difficult to incorporate audio, especially if you haven't done it before. And these will just play out as a one-shot or background noise and that might be you know sufficient for most people but for the vlc version of this if you want a little bit more control this adds the, that control for for stop and it also has a control button here where you can uh, mess with the volume you can loop you can do all that sort of thing so this is a little bit more controlled so when i play this it will actually give me some options instead of just stop and go or, or just play so if I go ahead and click on, I'm going to do one of these um, downtime, or no, let's do the uh, embark. 
So that's the embark. Uh, that's something I have loaded myself on the um, using the import tool. Basically, I, I've imported that myself. So that makes it easier uh, to control because now you can control the volume. You can hit stop all. You can ask it to loop and then replay it. So it just keeps playing over and over. So it has a little bit more control. And that's the nice thing about this VLC player is that you'll have that option. And this is a free extension on the Fantasy Grounds, Fantasy Grounds Forge on the website. So if you go to Fantasy Grounds and you go to the, um, we're going to go to the actual website. This is the uh, Atlassian. This is something you want to look at too, because this actually has um, how to integrate the sounds. So if you um, go to sounds using sound links, there's an updated thing that uh, Derek just put out like recently. And this is a newer version of how to get these things set up. So this is a very handy thing that you're going to want to have uh, when you first start your journey into getting these things set up. Because this kind of goes over how to do your own sound links. And it also kind of covers the setup and how you want to do this. So there's a web player. Um, and then you have this. So this is the uh, kind of a combination between the... Um, sirenscape and then also the local sounds and you can actually mix and match those too but one of the things is it's like this there's certain things and steps that you have to do that can be really really confusing so i want to um kind of go over that and then we'll go back to the audio so you can play sounds locally but you still have to pipe that over to your um players and they won't be able to hear the audio unless you do that um, Gwydion has just put out a video that kind of goes back over that. He's done videos on it before, but this will kind of help remind people of how that process might work and the limitations of that. So that's that's one thing you can do. So you can trigger it in audio uh, to send the audio to your friends. The only problem is you have to set that up ahead of time. But if you're using the um, Sirenscape uh, web player, they already have their own web player, and it just kind of integrates with, with the sound packs and with the... Uh, the account if you have a subscription but some of us don't want to pay for the subscription so you got to find kind of a workaround to getting the audio to your player so i'm going to link a video that where gwydion has very kindly reproduced his uh, video and gave us some options for um audio movers and um audio overseer which is what probably his favorite ways of porting audio to his players um, it doesn't go through Discord. It just goes to a straight link, and that's because of the quality of the audio. So he doesn't necessarily want to send it through Discord because of the audio quality. It gets compressed and all that sort of thing. So he has a way to I'll show you a way how to port it without needing to go through Discord, and it'll be kind of close to what you do with the audio player. So also the VLC player uses the, the VLC um plugin or, or app and this is the older one this is version 2.0 so don't use anything newer or older only use that and if you go to the extension on the fantasy grounds forge you'll find that there is a little like write-up for it so if you go to the um let me search for it so if you go to vlc fantasy grounds uh, something like that, and then maybe plus Forge. That'll give you a, a kind of a shortcut on how to short how to search for it, and you just do a Google search. It's a lot easier doing it like that. But this is basically how you would um, set this up. Well, there's a video for that as well. So if you go to YouTube, um, this is what Bain has put out. This kind of goes over the extension. And this shows you how to set up the VLC player. So if you want to use that instead of just a straight uh, file play or, or you know that thing, I think it would be uh, um, something that you might want to check out if you want to have a little bit more control. But this is the extension that was written by um, Tark. So he, he made this for the community. If you go to here, it's free. It doesn't cost anything, but you do have to be a... a a fantasy grounds member you have to be signed into the website but nonetheless if you go to the forge look for the fgu sound vlc support read through this because it gives you a direct link to the 
VLC 2.0 player. Now, if you already have VLC on your computer, I don't know if it's going to conflict with this or not, but I had to remove my 3.0 copy and I replaced it with the older 2.0. It's pretty lightweight, not too crazy or too much overhead. And really, you're just using it to pipe audio. So it's just like a really small little screen. It's not too crazy. And you can have a little bit more control of it within Fantasy Ground. So that's that's the reason why you would use something like this. And then, uh, not to mention, I'm just going to say that Gwydion had put out that video for um, piping audio. So i do a little recap here. So you can integrate local sounds with new Sirenscape integration in Fantasy Grounds, but with limitations. So the main advantage is that it will be easier to trigger audio events within the Fantasy Grounds Unity virtual tabletop interface instead of having to manually trigger audio with external hardware or software. So that's kind of what people were doing before all this came out. Um, also, if you're using Maticure's sound links from the Forge, you can continue to use those. There's no need to switch everything around unless you want to. So if, if you already have that or you prefer to do it that way, that's fine. And it's also worth knowing or at least mentioning that Maticure's audio um, triggers works with the local um, player for Sirenscape. So it doesn't work for uh, – it, it, it works for – you know, for the local version, not the web player one. So if you already have a local version that you run off your computer instead of the web player, it, just use Maticure sound links. That's probably your best option right now because it will actually support that. But as far as integrating with the online player and the Sirenscape and all that, that's a little bit more superior if you use the built-in controls with, with Fantasy Grounds uh, Unity. So... That's the thing is you got to you either can trigger it if you have a subscription through the uh, uh, Sirenscape or if you have the online player that is, you know, something that you're going to be using with the account, you have to have a Super Siren account. Now, if you're someone that owns individual packs or sounds, you probably want to use Maticure's audio links and then his uh, extension and just keep doing that and just run everything off your computer that way. And you might probably already have your audio routed to your players and the whole nine yards. So you really have to, um, you have to pipe the audio to discord or OBS or, or provide your players with some sort of link to hear the audio that you're piping over. So that's an important distinction to know that because just because this, audio trigger thing has been added to fantasy grounds it does not necessarily send the audio to your players so that's the point we're trying to make and using your own localized player takes a little bit of setup and work and there's videos out now there's resources links all kinds of stuff uh, so the other thing is you have to add your files or your audio to fantasy grounds so I'm going to go back to the, the launch screen. So I'm going to exit out of my session here. If you come up to the top left, let me grab my pointer so you can see what I'm pointing at because that's nothing more annoying than not being able to see what I'm talking about. So this is kind of geared more for people that are kind of new that are on the fence about this or maybe, you know, maybe you're just new to everything. So this is a, a way that you can incorporate using uh, sound with Fantasy Grounds. Now, it's not native like you would get with some of the other virtual tabletops. Those guys are piping their audio through the application through a web browser. So that's the difference. So it, it, it could just be a matter of, of a security issue or whatever, but it does... Um, you know, it does kind of beg to differ on how this would work for you, and it may not. So it just depends on, you know, what what your needs are and, and what, what things are like um, for your setup. So it really just depends on, on what's going on. But nonetheless, um, let me see if I can get that pointer up. There we go. Okay, so on this top left corner, you do have a... a a folder up here that you can access the back end instead of going through files, users, roaming, app data, all, you know, all that stuff. Just come up here to the top left, click on that folder, and that opens up the back end of Fantasy Grounds. 
So the next step is logically to create your own folder called sounds. So this does not exist by default. This is something that you have to add yourself. Now this is for the localized thing. This is not for the Sirenscape web player. So then if you click on, double click on that, I have already added folders to this particular back, uh, this folder in Fantasy Grounds. So you have to use the directory in Fantasy Grounds. So if you have a sound directory somewhere else on your computer, it's not going to work. It has to be in the sounds folder in Fantasy Grounds because it's a security thing. Nothing outside of the Fantasy Grounds will link to anything. So you got to do it within. So that means potentially moving your files over to this folder. Just try to keep in mind that audio files tend to take a lot of room. So if you have a small SSD drive, you might want to be kind of picky and choosy at what audio that you bring over. And then also you might want to sort through some of that audio because of the mix of stuff you might have in your folder. You might have WAV files, you might have FLAC, you might have MP3s, whatever the format is, uh, it could be a mixed bag. So right now I have 30 gigs of audio right now in this folder. That's a lot. And that's because I'm using the Fantasy 3 um, and the Fantasy 1 and 2 sound packs from Monument Studio. So that's why it's so huge. And then on top of that, some of these folders have both WAV files and MP3s, so they're mixed together. So it's kind of redundant or you don't need to have two copies of everything in the same folder. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, and if you add too much stuff at once to Fantasy Grounds, it's really hard on it when it goes to index the file. So while I'm doing that, I'm going to go back into Fantasy Grounds and I'll show you how to copy this over. And it's a really critical step in getting this list into Fantasy Grounds. Otherwise, you're going to get an error message. So let me um, let me go back, load campaign. I'm just going to load this in. And by the way, the VLC player is right here, this feature sounds hyphen VLC. That's the extension that I downloaded from the Forge. So you have to update Fantasy Grounds first. Then you'll see the extension if you're going to use the VLC player. And then you'll load your campaign. So make sure you do that before you go into the game or you have to come back out. So there's a couple steps here. So what you're doing is you're deciding if you want to use the online player or if you want to do localize or you can do a mix of either. So the online player requires a subscription. But it is very handy, and it goes hand in hand with a lot of the modules, the SoundLink modules that SmiteWorks is putting out. And they're going to put out more. And you can also still build your own that way. But this is more focused on getting the audio from your computer to your, to your friends. And you're going to use Fantasy Grounds to trigger those sounds. The Fantasy Grounds doesn't really host the audio itself. It's on your computer. So that's something you need to understand. When you're using like something like um, Foundry or Roll20, the sounds are hosted on the browser already, so you don't have to do any of this type of setup. It's mainly that it has a built-in player on there, and it's easier to send that to your players. But when you're doing it through an application that's hosted on a computer and not a web portal, it's a different story. So now that I have that going, I'm going to go back up here to the sound context, which is in the tools area. And then if you come over to settings here in the center, this is where you would add your files. Or if you're going to use the VLC player, you have to add them over here. The, this one and this are separate. They're, they're different. They're not the same directory. So here's where a lot of people had confusion. First, make sure, and I went through this the other day, is make sure that you're grabbing the links from your Fantasy Ground Sounds folder, not from your original folder. So what I was doing is taking the links and trying to copy it from my D drive, which is my storage drive, into this area, and it wasn't working. I couldn't figure it out, and I go, oh, crap, I wasn't using the, the correct uh, directory. So make sure you're doing that. It's kind of a dumb dumb move on my part but nonetheless so I'm going to just go with a situational environment so I'm going to double click on that so these are sounds that I brought over from another hard drive and I put them in the Fantasy Grounds uh, Unity back end in a folder called sounds and now I'm going to add those collections or the group of sounds to the sound context menu so what you want to do is go into the any one of your folders in this case I'll go with realm music or actually situational and 
There are just a couple things here. There's civil unrest. There's a town square. There's some panic. So these are just some basic things. This is a pretty good, good example. So when you highlight these files, once you do that, you need to hold shift. Or if you're using a Mac, you need to hold the um, option button or a command and something option and something else. I don't remember. but And then you right click. And you want to click copy as path, not just copy, but copy as path. That will help you prevent you from getting that error in the chat window. So you have to hold the shift key, or if you're using a Mac, it has to be the option key or OPT. I don't know what it, what it is, but that's how you get this, this dialog that says copy as path. What that does is it copies not only the, the directory, but also the file name. So I'm going to hit copy his path and then I'm going to minimize this and then you go to the VLC player in this case or in the file however you want to do it go to file import and then I'm going to click on the cell and hit control V as in paste and you want to take a look at your directory C users app data roaming so this is correct once I hit file import, it should pull it over into this list. And I didn't get any error messages, so I must have done it right. So once you've done that, now you pretty much have it set up in Fantasy Grounds. And at this point, you have to build your own context menus to associate these with certain things that are going on in your chat. So if you have a player character and you want to have some sound played while they're attacking, you have to come over here to the sound sets. Uh, you're going to create a new item. And this is going to allow you to create your own. So maybe I want to do battle sounds or something like that. And this one is going to be for a specific character. And then what you'll do is you can drag over the links that you want to associate with this particular player. So you can set up a trigger or it can just be content where you're just doing one shot type things. And then it could be a story. It could be an NPC. You know, that's the way that this can be triggered. Or if it's a trigger, it will trigger from the chat window. And then what you're going to do is you're going to drag over the actual link to your to this area. And then if you have a pattern or a trigger of, of keywords, you're going to put that in here. The important thing about this is it has to match. So if you have the spelling or you don't capitalize the letters here in the regex part and it goes to this chat window, it's not going to trigger properly. So the spelling and the case sensitive does matter in this case. So this is how this is the last step is to associate and create your own links. And this is what you're paying for when you buy the Fantasy Grounds version of these on the store. So you're paying for all that labor, all that time. But someone has come in here and meticulously made all these links for you. So if you have like the player's handbook, the monster manual, and the lost mine thing, those are already done for you, at least a majority of them. You can still add your own and change them, swap them out. But this is already done for you if you have those modules purchased. So here's the monster manual NPC sounds. And if you were using a red dragon, there's the context menu for the red dragon. So this is going to give you triggers to use while you're fighting with that particular dragon. And this will come up automatically in the context menu. So when you're over here and you're playing and you have an adult red dragon on the combat tracker, it's going to bring this up and you're going to have access to these or it's going to replace an existing sound if you've already had that loaded. So this is what what is what you're paying for when you buy those packs, you're paying for the convenience of having all these things linked already. However, if you're going to do your own thing or you have a rule set that's not supported yet or if Sirenscape doesn't already have their own sound set for the for your favorite rule set or for your homebrew stuff, you're going to have to set up all these yourself. So this one just happens to be conveniently already done. So somebody has taken the time and linked all of these elements to go with that red dragon. And this is based on the library in Sirenscape. 
So if you're going to do this with your own localized sound, you have to know your library and what they sound like and what they're for. That's why you want to label these and organize them before you port them over to Fantasy Grounds. And if you're going to make these, you want to have them kind of match or at least make sense to you when you're going to link these to the events. So organization is going to do you a lot of good in the beginning. It's going to be a lot of work, but at least you can, you know, get it set up so where it's not as difficult for you. Because right now, I don't have anything really organized. And until I bring over the rest of my content, I don't even know what I have. So it's going to take me a few weeks to really go through everything and figure out what I need, what I don't need. And that's an important aspect of doing this yourself and linking things together. If you're going to use the Sirenscape links and kind of do your own thing, it's a little easier. Because the files are identified better and they have these, these categories and number IDs and subtypes. So that's what makes this more appealing because the Sirenscape one is a lot easier to set up and it's a lot more integrated. But when you're using your own audio, you're kind of winging it. You're kind of doing your own thing. So it's it's one of those things where you have to decide how much effort it's worth or if you just want to get a subscription, a Super Siren subscription, or don't even deal with it at all. I mean, those are your choices. So I'm just trying to bring you the, real, the reality of it because some people believe that once this is incorporated, it fixes everything. It doesn't. You have to do some work if you're going to pipe in your own audio to your players. And even with the Sirenscape sub, you have to pay for the subscription. And if you want to use the Fantasy Grounds um, art or the uh, audio links, there's another payment. And now you're going to have to potentially still go in and associate some custom links instead of just the ones that give you. So you can do everything yourself. You can mix and match, or you can just do your you know, the sirens, uh, the siren super sub. So this is just another tool to use to add immersion to your games. It's not a requirement. You don't have to use any of it. If you want to just play a soundtrack in the background and not have any of this, you're, you're welcome to it. That's, that's, on, that's on you. But I just wanted you to know the reality of what this means. So you're either going to buy and pay for the convenience, or you're going to spend the time to organize and set things up. It's up to you. Some people don't want to put the time in. That's fine. But just just keep in mind that Fantasy Grounds isn't doing anything for you other than making it more convenient to trigger sounds. It doesn't set up the audio routing. That's either done by you or by the Sirenscape web player. Okay, so that's the difference of, of what I, I think the perception is that this gets around and it's hosted here and you can just play it. That's not the case. You have to have some kind of web player or some sort of application so your players can hear the audio, whether you pipe it through audio or you provide them a link. So there's nothing hosted in Fantasy Grounds other than the links. So that's what this does is it, it, it allows you to link your files or your Sirenscape content to whatever actions are going on in your game or to an NPC or to an attack those sort of things. And those have to be set up too if it's not already integrated. So I just wanted you to know the reality of it. However, once it's set up, it's pretty sweet. You can play sounds from here. You know, you don't have to, uh, you don't necessarily have to uh, play anything specific. Like I just have some background ambient sounds that are playing right now. And what's nice about the VLC player is you have this control I can actually turn up the volume. I can click loop to allow this audio to be looped in the background. So there is something playing. I'll turn it up a little. So this is up to you how you want much of the stuff you want to get into, how deep you want to go. So it just really depends. But um, going back to this, this spreadsheet or this presentation, um, so this is... You know, you have to integrate your local audio. You have to figure out how you're going to pipe it. And then you need to set up the chat links and the triggers. And you have to, you know, manage your library. So this kind of goes back over that. So one has to figure out how to pipe or send the audio to Discord or OBS to your players. Otherwise, this matters very little. For security reasons, one must create a new folder called Sounds 
in the Fantasy Grounds main folder called Sound. So you were going to make that folder. It might be a good time to sort through your RPG audio library to sort things out, like this, the file names and what, what's, what do you have in your collection. And then maybe reorganize it before you add it to the Fantasy Grounds folder. Um, a huge list or a big file dump is going to make it kind of hard to organize, and it could get kind of confusing and overwhelming when you're in Fantasy Grounds. Some people just want to dump a big list of things and then pull what they need when they need it, but that is not going to help you if you're going to create your own sound links and you want to be a little bit more organized. So you got to kind of weigh that out. Is it worth your time and that, and that sort of thing? And like I said before, you have to highlight, you have to hold the shift key while after you have your files highlighted and copy as path. Not just copy, but copy as path. And then you go to the Fantasy Grounds app. So when you're in the app, you locate the app uh, or the uh, sound context audio icon. It looks like a musical note. You open up the sound context menu, you click on settings. And then you go to File Import if you're going to do your own, whether it be in VLC or just the regular File Import. They are separate. And then over here, once you have that pasted in and you build your list, it will start to make an index for you. And you, if you get an error message in the chat window, make sure that you copy the correct directory, make sure that you held Shift down, right click, copy as path, and then paste. Um, don't forget that if you don't hold that shift key down, that, that option won't come out. And if you have a Mac, it's going to be the option key or OPT or whatever. Um, when you right click to copy, it needs to be copy as path. I keep saying that over and over because that's where a lot of people go wrong. They're not used to doing that. Um, so you, you now will have your local audio file added to the Fantasy Ground sound integration feature. Reminder of the limitations. If you just use the regular file version, you have no control over pause, stop, loop, that sort of thing, unless you use the VLC control extension for Fantasy Grounds. Otherwise, it's just a straight shot audio. No control over it. It plays, and that's it. You don't get to control it or stop it or anything. The actual file names and organization are important to understanding and knowing what you actually have in your audio library. So if you're not familiar with your collection, it might be a good time to do that before you even add it. Um, you still have to figure out how to route or pipe your audio locally to your players, whether it be in Discord, Skype, Teams, or you provide an external link. Whatever it is, you have to set that up if you're not using the Sirenscape player. And the next step, obviously, is to learn to how to create the phrases, keywords, links, and any audio associations with chat events, chat triggers, NPC, story entries, that sort of thing. So I just wanted you to know the reality of it. So it's, it's a bit of work. So if you have the Sirenscape subscription already, and you purchase those Sirenscape sounds off the Fantasy Ground store, a lot of that work or that headache is done for you. So like this is an example of Lost Mine. If you load up certain elements, it will pull up this context menu and you'll have the, like this is the Goblin Ambush and the Goblin Trail because those exist in the story entry. So the context menu kind of makes it like a, I don't know, kind of like follow along as you read or as you do this. Background sounds is a little loud. Sorry about that. Yeah, I just, uh, I, I turned it down. Yeah, so all I'm doing is just kind of going over the facts and reality here. I'm just a messenger. You know, if you're not happy with the feature or, you know, you feel like you've been cheated, just write to uh, Smiteworks and Fantasy Grounds and let them know you're unhappy. But I think with a little bit of time and once everyone gets acclimated with this, then they'll figure out if they want to do it or not. It's not a requirement. Um, it's just another way to add immersion to your games. And then that's not to mention all the new stuff. There's new dice that are out. And there's a bunch of things that, you know, like new uh, animated tokens and animated maps and the whole nine yards. So there's a lot to, to digest in this new release. But I just wanted you to know what the reality was. So I was going to uh, point out that I have been playing with, kind of getting off topic, 
but I have been playing with the automated, you know, with the maps that are that have the um, animation. And if you use the combat tracker and story entries, like I'm using this battle here with the Sahu again, if I go into the sound menu, it will bring up the context for that. So if I go back into the sound setup, the Sirenscape is, this is for the Sirenscape player, it's automatically bringing up sounds. So I can click this Sahu again fight and then once I do this, though, it's going to get pretty loud. And then I still have the local sound playing in the background. So I could change that, too. But you can change the global volume and the one shots, you know, if you want to. So let me go back into and turn down that ambient sound in the background. So if I go to settings. And then I'm going to go to the VLC player, pull up this control, hit stop all. So that stops that weird background noise. That I, that was the local sound. The one that's playing now is the, the, the Sirenscape version. Which is another thing that you'll come across when you're using your own audio. Is all the different audio studios use a different compression and a different volume level. So you're going to have to figure that out too. So... You might have one set that's recorded kind of loud and another one that's kind of medium. So, you know, you're going to go through that problem too. So the Sirenscape ones are a little bit more leveled. I mean, there is some volume differences, but at least, you know, at least it's a little bit smoother. So this is just a Sahuigan fight that I can, um, that I have queued up or a Sahuigan battle or here's a Sahuigan fighter. So... The fighter, these are just now playing. This is a sound effect. So I can, I can do quite a bit with it, so it just depends. So the, the Sirenscape web player kind of makes this a lot easier. But if you want to incorporate your own local audio, you still have to do your own setup and your own mode. So it just depends on what your needs are. So go out and spend the money or do a lot of work and do it yourself. So it just kind of depends on which way you want to go with it. So I think um, some of the community believe that the sounds would play locally through Fantasy Grounds. It doesn't do that. It still plays outside of Fantasy Grounds. And that's because Fantasy Grounds is not a web player or it's not a browser. So you can do that much more easier with Foundry and World 20 than you can with Fantasy Grounds because of security things. The browser takes care of the security. When you do it through an application, it's a whole other thing. Anyway, so this is just a kind of an example. You know, I got these sharks here, reef sharks. And then if you're going to do a battle, let's say, let's bring her up. So I don't have any sound set up for her, so the context menu probably won't come up, but the attacks do. So if I go to her actions tab, and I use, let's say, I'm going to use her hand crossbow and shoot it at the shark. So it does make that sound in the back. So that's just a, and then for damage, because that was a hit, I'm going to roll damage. Yeah, that's, that's the little sound effects for the attacks. So anyways, you get the idea, uh, hopefully. And then I'll put all the links in the video to help you. So there's three steps in this. There's all the setup. Then there's all the importing the files and stuff. And then there's the file associations that have to be made if you're going to do local audio. So take care, everyone. Hopefully this is helpful. Happy Father's